Hi uh, everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs and it's day four. Could you believe it? Let's see what's in store. So, a bunch of comments here to read in a brand new build. This is going to be a pretty exciting episode. Let's get to our first kill of all kill. We're trying out a Peregrine build and it does get the one shot. That's my first Seven attempt death, my with regards. the new build. And that's going to go right into nicely into some of these comments that I've been receiving. And the comments have been sick. So, episode two, we did a comment session where we just read people's ideas. We talked about you know borderlands in general and the channel we're continuing that series today so let's jump right down into it brett 9717 a very good friend of the channel says i'm a newbie to borderlands but i enjoyed having extra vault hunters in bl2 gives more variety also go for more identity for each hunter too i was actually playing in a game with brett a little bit of bl3 co-op and he found a mitosis hunter seeker in a vending machine it was ridiculous okay so as far as Having a newbie to be able to saying that they enjoy the extra vault hunters is a really, really big deal, right? In general, that's a V-35 grenade launcher, anointed venomous hornet. That's a pretty insane Moe's roll. And we got the counter up. I actually have it set up so that I don't see the counter to the very end. So I started at 167, I believe, this 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 session. And it's going to be exciting to see how many I can get up to during the recording duration of the video. Okay, so he says he likes extra, extra vault hunters and gives more variety but yeah that's, honestly it's a really good point and also go for more identity for each hunter too the more identity is something that i think is very very cool if you go back to the bo3 launch to the bo3 launch trailers my brother actually sent me the mowen for mose and it was pretty cool to go back and watch um the launch trailer for mose it's all about iron bear right flax is all about oh i watched flax it's like very much about the hunt which is pretty cool I think Zane was just like, Zane is just, Zane's in a bar, of course. Zane's in a bar, wait, doing that? Ruins it? Okay. So Zane is in a bar and he's just like talking to himself. His, it's his clone, which you don't know to the end. This build actually goes off, by the way. Off. So there's some, there's some really big shenanigans that we we're min-maxing here. We will be going into here in a sec. But more identity, I think we're going to be seeing it because the, the creator, no, maybe it was the creator of Lilith. But it was another one of the developers as well that were talking about how... And I think... Was it Sam Winkler as well? Someone mentioned how something that they're put, trying to push in the, in the game a lot is... Character decision... Or not character decision, but character diversity. Like the story diversity based on which character you play. Right? As, as basic as what I, what I took from it. And that, I think that creates more identity for the individual characters. Which I think is something that we probably will be seeing inside of borderlands 4 so johnny says so rare to find someone who can be entertaining for a whole hour great work loving the series hey thanks johnny you know i i kind of copied this style from northern lion who's a content creator that i enjoy because when i decided to start making content i was like going through the ideation phase of like what kind of channel am i gonna have and i was watching youtube videos on how to make a youtube channels and people said take from your from who you watch from your pool so for me, it's like Northern Lion. Um, it was King Sticks for League of Legends for a long time, which is uncut, unedited, pure, just like hit, hit, chord, send it. Still get the one shot though, right? Yep. It's, it's never not one shot. By the way, it's actually incredible how strong this is. Okay. The reason I'm not revealing the build yet is because I, I have a comment where someone was asking me about the build and I want to wait to get to that, so... Cool, thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it. You can just crawl away from your pet. You'll be able to get out of his revive area. Then you just hold square or reload button to insta die. Okay. So we are going to try that. This will make the build significantly more expensive, but we don't need money for anything, I don't think. So send our racks maybe a little bit early on that. Maybe not. One shot. Obviously. Oh, we got a monarch. Oh, no, it's a nemesis. Okay. All right. Go again. Oh, why not, why not down myself? Okay. But um, thanks, Casillas. We're going to probably be doing that tech here soon. Joey says, this farm reminds me of when I tried to farm a good deathless. That's very funny, actually, uh, Joey, because I, too, uh, spent some time farming a good deathless. I, I'm a Moe's player. Uh, deathless is an amazing strats on her because she has a skill in her orange tree that gives her more gun damage percentage based, based on how low your health is. So Moe's has a skill... That you can put three out of three into that drops her own shield like the front loader shield or like a deathless how she can um, she can drop her own hp 
but if you want to but if you don't want to have to take that skill for whatever reason maybe you don't have the gear maybe you got better rolls on something else to drop your health below 50 percent to maybe use you red you know you guys if you listen to this video you know the you red text um you can use deathless to not only push your shield to even greater heights because mose is like the big shield character especially when it comes to amp shots you can also just rock a deathless anytime you want to proc you red it's like really flexible this is my old muscle memory coming to play how do i do that and then come down here and throw some fish slaps the strats have changed now we just show up and show out so joey yeah i mean if this farm reminds you of that i mean yeah, I, I remember that being a pretty like a pretty big farm for me was was getting a good deathless i wanted a snow drift and i think i was going for an atom bomb or something like that so it's pretty good time honestly Naga Vang says, can you show the entire build for, for fast killable farming? I want to farm god rolls on multiple elements, and it would be perfect to farm him as fast as you did. Keep up the great content. All right, Naga Vang, guys, buckle up. This is going to be a... If anyone who's saying, no, do runs, do runs, get the Monarch, get the Monarch. You guys got to relax just for a second, okay? And let me whip, okay? So we are abusing Guardian Angel. As you guys can see, it's my it's my go-to weapon of choice here. I have two different roles as of right now. I'm farming more roles in my vault cards. Essentially, as you know, the further something away from you is, the more damage you deal when using the Guardian Angel. The anointments are important here. Um, on action skill end, melee damage is increased by 100% for a short time. That is important because we want as much melee damage as possible for going for one-shots. This, it might not be the most... Um, I would say it might not be the most versatile Guardian Angel because it's very specific to melee damage. However, for doing this specific melee damage one-shot strategy, it is the best Guardian Angel that I can think of. Okay, for more versatile use, I'm trying to collect more Guardian Angels instead of having to hit the reroller. Realistically, you read would, would be something I'm very interested in. I'm not too sure what else. If you guys have good anointments on your Guardian Angels, let me know. But I want this exact Guardian Angel with the blade on it for even more bonus melee damage. And the reason we want melee damage, and you can see I also have a face puncher here for melee damage, is because we are hard abusing the fish slap. The fish slap plus unleash the dragon combo. So the fish slap scales off melee damage, which is why we have the melee damage from our Guardian Angel. And we're going to be hitting people with really, really hard grenades. That's the build. If you need to kill bosses quickly, then you can slap on something like the Unleash the Dragon. If you're not killing bosses, you can honestly use a Schluter. And I found my, I found myself finally a new Schluter, which goes really, really well with this build. And it's area of effect damage, incendiary damage, and shock damage. So if I'm using a Revolter, this boosts my Revolter. Um, as far as incendiary damage, I really don't think I have any going on right here. Uh, but the, the racks themselves do fire damage, which I believe that fire damage goes to my fish slap as well. Bonus. Because of my, the star of the show, the Peregrine Glass mod. Whenever Flax rack hits an enemy, they drop a grenade. This effect has a short cooldown. So, when we use our racks, when they, when they touch the enemies, they'll drop a fish slap on them. The fish slap go boom. When the fish slap go boom, it will be getting guardian and angel damage because I'm far away. And it will be getting 100% bonus melee damage because the fish slap scales with melee damage. I think instead of grenade damage, if I understand that correctly. So, the fish slap go boom, which will proc our unleash the dragon. Unleash the power of L dragon, okay? The melee ignite chance is 100%. So, no matter what, our fish slap grenade, when it hits, it will ignite. This also works with slide and ground slam. The Unleash the Dragon can roll with three different bottom rolls. Um, melee damage and incendiary damage are the two best. The odds are 1 in 20. I actually set up a graphic to go do it, and then I got it in a few, a few runs when I was practicing. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Now, the shield slot is really, really interesting. Okay, so for general purpose use, I would say Revolter, Action Skill Start, the best one you can get your hands on. Absorb, absorb, capacity, pretty good. Um, you can also rock something like a frozen heart. Like I've said in multiple videos, this will make your, your mobbing pretty good. You're, you can have fish slap for range damage, and you can have frozen heart for uh, close range damage. Something that the racks can sometimes struggle with, especially when you're using a fish slap. The flesh slap can down you. You don't want to be really shooting at close range targets that much. You want to be, if you are shooting at close range targets, you want to back up for sure, 100%. Frozen heart can kind of 
help you with that hit kill those close range targets especially if you uh roll a schluter that i rolled with air of effect damage on it for your grenade your fish slap incendiary damage um for your racks and i believe the racks give your grenade the bonus element that's just what i've read online i don't know if that's actually true okay so that's the build unleash the dragon fish slap yep it's broken we know it but the peregrine is the cool part it's the it's the delivery method these are the skills you're looking for the best case scenario i think would probably be five out of five in the orange one but the green one there i think is fine so that's it's the the green one is action skill buffs i think it's action skill cooldown buff on kill and though the left one is damage the shield that I have, that I went to just go farm, this is the second piece from the last video. The Peregrine is new, and the this Old God is new. Okay, so I was farming for a Fire Old God to pair with my Unleash the Dragon uh, Melee Ignite Chance. Because the dots from this are, from the Melee hit, because they're Mayhem scaled, are insanely big. That's what does all the damage, is the Melee Ignites. But, but how much I'm, I'm one-shotting him, I feel like I might be able to switch this off for like a Schluter or something. Anyways, the Old God comes in, and it's going to be my new shield of choice for this for this farm. It's going to be much better than the Revolter because the Revolter doesn't do anything to kill a Volt. And it's going to be better than the Super Soldier, which I was using before. Because the Super Soldier doesn't do anything for me except give me some, like, immunity. It doesn't matter. The Old God is going to give us damage. It's going to give us radiation damage. And unfortunately, we don't really have access to radiation damage in our kit unless we're rocking a U-Rad Guardian Angel. In which case, this would be really, really strong. However, it it rolled for me a great anointment, which gives it bonus radiation damage with weapons for 10 seconds. So I believe this counts for action skills. It definitely counts for grenades. So our peregrine grenade that, that drops my fish slap will do radiation damage. And that is what he is weakest to. So it's kind of a nice farm. And you, you just put all those elements together. You take all these elements, you put them together, the garden angel, fish slap then at least the dragon the peregrine and the, the old god and things just go just boom you know what i'm saying it's like boom so by the way mod i have on instant i have on uh, i like the descriptions of the legendaries i like to see that i think that's that's nice that is the build rogue mage 50 says responding will work if you redo it the skill has a cooldown okay so that's yes the second person in a row the second person telling me that about the revive tech, I believe so. I will do the revive tech, guys. I here we go. I do. This is the one. So, if there's a leggy, we check it. No leggy, we drop grenade insta. Nova boner, drop grenade. Old F to give up before Pat gets here. Boom, you and get the the death. Is this going to be faster? And does the loot go away? Doesn't feel that much faster. I don't know if that's faster and it's cost me more money. Like, I should probably time it, but it doesn't feel that that much faster to me. And if it doesn't clear the loot, then I'm really not in love with it. Can we just stand as far back as we can here? And try to one shot him. Now the 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 amplification damage on the Garden Angel does have a range. It does have a range. If I try to snipe someone with a level one longbow grenade it won't work like that so there is a cap to how far back you can go i personally haven't really felt or tested how far back that cap goes i just try to stand as far back as i possibly can i'm not really being that super about it just stand about stand about as far back as you can you're a long range mage essentially this is essentially just a a, a basic maximum range build where your racks have insane range super sore cooldown and tracking and pretty good projectile speed so you're like wait that's broken yeah and it always drops a nuke i'm telling you it's flak is unreal with this combo now the combo is broken in general on a lot of characters on all characters but flak's unique effect to have this cool bird delivery system is what makes it really cool on him okay no legis and as far as the go down tech i honestly think that it's slower i think it's slower 
So, and it's going to cost us a lot more money to do it. So I think we just keep going this way. That way the loot clears and, you know, I'm stressed. I'm not, I'm stress free about it. Cause look, I can, I can run Insta here. I really do think it's faster. Sorry. I know like console players, I'm sure it's like, it's like the greatest tech in the world. Come on, Rex, find your, find your target here. Remember back in the day when we used to wait for him to like do his thing instead of one shotting him? Isn't that crazy? So if I don't need unleash the dragon, I could put on something else here. Oh, oh, and to I think it was yeah, uh, Nagavang. About the build, there's a couple more things to to understand. Oh, I didn't even go over the skill tree. Holy moly, bro! I I told you about the gear. It is to be fair, it's a gear focused build. The skill tree, I think you could. I I don't know for certain. But I think you could do this almost skillless. We, there are some things that we were doing to boost our damage. A lot. So, the number... Um, I won't go over every single skill because that's just, that's just kind of boring. Um, the only ones that are really, really important are the orange tree. Because that's how you get access to your racks. Right now, I'm using the cryo rack because it does more damage than the fire rack. And if I wanted, I want to do cryo damage with my with my fish slap against this boss rather than fire damage because it has a better multiplier against shields than fire does. So I, I'm taking I'm taking cry over fire. And then I'm taking send it for two additional rack. I really don't think any of these three matter that much. In fact, I could probably take this off and just go for the cry out rack and be absolutely fine. I could probably go no I could go um no augment and be just fine here, hopefully. We'll see. So I'll even try no augment. The augment doesn't really matter. But you need the orange tree. 100% need the orange tree. Let's just go two basic racks. Yeah, we still get the one shot. Um, you need the orange tree to get access to the racks. Unfortunately, uh, you don't really care about the skills at all. If you take ones that you think you might like, um, we're not reloading, we're not shooting, we're not doing anything. We are, we are just casting and throwing grenades. So if you if you no flex orange tree at all, like I do, um, pretty much everything here is useless. Like the hunter skills are nice. I think that some of these hunter skills affect other skills, even though they say they don't. I think it might be it might be rage and recover. So that's a decent one. Um, this one really doesn't matter. The little bit of pet damage is fine. A little bit of extra cash is fine. But I don't really necessarily care about Megavore that much. And if I have to give up points for things, I'd much rather just give up Megavore for other things. So Orange Tree, unfortunately, you get sidelined just because we need the racks. However, there's one really, really important thing that we get from the Orange Tree, and that is our Scorcher pet. Hey, what's up, bro? So our Scorcher pet, the spider Ant Scorcher, it will occasionally deal incendiary damage to all nearby enemies, which is actually really, really strong comparatively to all the other pet damage. It's not better than Loaderbot, as far as I know, but it's probably first or second best as far as overall DPS, especially to targets that are melee and um, ground-based. While accompanied by Scorcher, I get health regeneration and increased elemental damage. That's the big one, elemental damage, plus 30% here. Um, and the reason we have such great elemental damage from this laddie is because of the pet bonuses that we're getting from the blue tree, which is Barbaric Yop. Increase the power of pet bonuses granted the flag. That's really, really nice. And if you don't have a Peregrine class mod, you're saying, oh, I can't do this build. I don't have the Peregrine class mod. I recommend using class mods that can get points into Barbaric Yop. Or you can use a Red Fang. Obviously, Red Fang is, is really good you'll never get targeted but you want to look for a barbaric yop in one of your other skills let's see if i can find one or if you can't find that skill pack tactics is another really 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 big big skill and that's all damage dealt by flak and their pet is increased what correct additionally the maximum health of both flak and their pet is increased those are some nice bonuses 21 percent for damage holy moly universal so we don't go dominance this is i think that I think you could take this, but I, if I'm trying to get as many points as possible in, in, in valuable places, I don't. So we go pretty, we go pretty far blue tree, and we go all the way down green tree. We don't really use these skills unless we're traveling, 
places. If I'm trying to go quick, quick boy, don't get hit. I'm taking out my circus until you're dead. Fade away with gunslinger jabber. Um, and just run and fade away with a toboggan and an EMP 45, which as you can see, EMP 45 is for trying, getting to and fro places. And my toboggan, a consummated toboggan, which rolled movement speed, by the way. I don't know if they all do, but that's pretty sick. So getting to and fro places. So green tree is is pretty important here. The capstone, I want it. Flak and Flax pet gain increased damage when Flak activates an action skill. That's really, really strong for this build because I'm using the rack as a delivery system. And even if we don't have the Peregrine class mod, we still use our racks before we toss our nades. So this is a nade and action skill build. But when you get the Peregrine, it can just be action skill. It's just, it's, it's ease. You know, you can still use the grenades, but the Peregrine does the job. However, if the Peregrine, I, I, the reason why I was wondering if it one shots, because if it didn't one shot, it, I was going to assume it's, it's because we lost points um, in pack tactics from this. What, what were we using? We were using, we were using stack bots with plus three. And I think that's what we were using. So now we have this Peregrine class mod. It's, it's really, really nice as a delivery system. Yeah. You go green all the way down and eager to impress is a nice skill for for mobbing but there's no there's no skill in this tree that's helping us with this one shot besides the power the power inside riven belmont says do you have a favorite gun in, in the borderlands games you love to use even if it ain't the great that great mine's the emperor in bl2 let's see it if i get a god roll here i'm gonna be really sorry that i'm gonna no it's not it's a corrosive one i don't have a corrosive one I gotta look at the parts though. Why don't we uh let's put this, put this thing under the microscope a little bit, shall we? It has all three body accessories. Just sick. All three barrel accessories. Sick. Its grip isn't the absolute best, but it's not the worst. Fire rate is as good as damage in my book. Fire rate is as good as damage in my book. Again, with the foregrip. The rail's accuracy. That's a pretty low roll. Pretty low roll, in my opinion. Could be reload speed. But not a bad monarch not a bad monarch at all pretty decent run do you have a favorite gun that you like even if it's not the best his is the emperor in bl2 okay so funny story i think i've told this before riven but the emperor is actually my first ever legendary um i got it in the slot machines in bl2 and it was the deft emperor and i love that weapon and i'm happy for you that you like that one as your number one for me um it's definitely not the Emperor. Like, I'm happy you have that. I'm happy that's does that for you, but it's a cool legendary. It's just, to me, it just felt like an SMG. You know, like it felt like a really fun, strong legendary SMG because it was like my first legendary. It was like, oh. But, you know, it was an SMG. Not that I mean, not, not that I. Listen, because the, I'm sure you love it because of the things that people don't like about it. So you don't have to worry about my opinion, right? But for me, hmm, something that I like to run, even if it ain't the best. For BL3, I think Trevenator. Trevenator, at least from Moe's, was really, really fun. Uh, for Flak, I haven't found, you know, that weapon. But maybe if we're talking any Borderlands game. Hmm. I have to think about it for a bit. You know, potential candidates come up in my head. It's like the Rough Rider, you know, the Rough Rider. It's not a weapon, but it's a shield. I think that's really, really cool. The whole idea of it, how much, the amount of synergies that it has. Get almost every Vault Hunter in that game. I'm just trying to think of something like when it drops, I'm like, yeah, like, Let's go. I got that. That's so insane. I would say I really like the ogre in BL2. I like what it represents. I like that it represents rapid fire splash damage. I'd like it a lot. A lot. But I haven't gotten it enough times because I think it's like a, a Tiantina's weapon. DLC weapon. And there's just so many good weapons. You know, 
I would say in BO3, I'm going to give it to the Trevenator. And that's that's because of raw damage potential and also a cool it's got a really cool lore. BL2, it might be honestly, I think it's it's Sludge's shotgun. I think Sludge's shotgun is a respectable pick here because it's it's basically kind of like an Emperor, right? It's kind of like just like a little bit of a souped up version of a normal bandit shotgun, but the sound, the boom, ch -ch, boom, ch -ch, boom, ch -ch, it just you know, it just does that thing, you know? That pump action. So, I would say Sludge's Shotgun. Like, if it dropped on a playthrough for me, I would be, like, very sad if I couldn't use it. Very sad. Okay, and I'm going to try to not read a comment right as I'm going for the kill. Maybe a second after. So I realized a little bit ago that I did that on a kill. And I don't want to have to do that. I want the, when we see the Monarch, that changes our lives and our opinions about the world. This is a really fast fire right one. It's not going to be one that we take, but extra extra charge of rack attack is a cool anointment on Beastmaster. Flak, but and it might be better for mobbing. I wouldn't mind having a Garden Angel with an extra stack of rack attack. But for this specific build, I want the extra melee damage so my fish slap hits harder. We stand back, and I think we're doing some radiation damage. Boom. I'm definitely getting radiation damage there though. So that's pretty quick. That's pretty sick. Andrew Bays says, my first Monarch was a times eight, but not a God roll. Wow. I've only seen one times eight in the entire time we've been doing this and I'm well over 166 runs was the last time I saw it. So the fact that you got out in the first run is pretty sick. I think I would be kind of like, if I, my first Monarch was a times eight, I'd be kind of disappointed. I'm like, really? Like, it's cool, but like, it's so much less usable than the times four. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of the, the times four, rolling back says one of every element God roll in four times and X time. Don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about how long it took. But they only work with flax, sadly. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this, this goes straight to the point where like, I thought it might work on most, but he's saying it only works on flak. So that's if that's the case that's just a really sad thing and it's, i think it's because of because of the stack bot class mod just, just it's just so good it synergizes so well with the monarch times eight we actually have replies from my boy casillas he said i thought the times eight worked well on mo's since yes exactly this is what i was thinking too i thought times eight worked well on mo's since she can have like unlimited ammo i never played mo's so i'm not too sure and rolling back says X4 Mos has less ammo use, but there's so many better options for her. Okay, so there's no I I kind of agree with this. When I played Mos, whenever I used the Monarch, I always felt like why would I not just use something else? Oh no, one shot there. I think I also I owe myself one one timer, one tick as well. I don't think I missed one, or I think I think I missed it. And I believe I watched back a video and I had missed one, so I don't feel bad about hitting it one time if I'm unsure. Okay, we get a monarch and because we didn't kill him instantly we have to deal with the, the pack but our damage is so insanely high it doesn't matter okay let's see an 11,000 times four it's low damage this is a decent a cool anointment because if if i'm talking like goat status anointments i think that might do as much damage as say a garden angel let's go see Let's go see if we can watch out something with this monarch. I I saw that anointment before and I thought maybe that was really good. And it's the anointment that when enemies get hit with racks, they take a 100% increased damage for a short time. And this should work really, really well with a peregrine class mod. Because my racks go out there and they hit them first. Let's see. Bonk. So you see how much more damage we get from the Garden Angel? Isn't that kind of insane? Isn't that kind of insane? We, how much how dependent we are on the garden angel and the more i thought about it the more i realized like yeah the reason like caster flak is a thing is because a certain pieces of gear can allow it to be and i'm kind of okay with it like if that's if this is if this is their way of like saying like we there's no way to balance it here's a, here's what you get I, I actually do not mind that to increase the amount of play styles available to a player Oh, 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 oh man yeah it feels good to put back on that garden angel but with that i think with that anointment it could be pretty sick 
and Casillas eventually did say, yeah, it makes sense. I think people prefer the flipper over this, I'm not, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think the flipper, it kind of does what the Monarch does for Moe's, but with splash damage, with better ammo consumption. So you can't get it ripping those seriously fast fire rates like the Monarch, but it's still a fun weapon. Or I mean, it's still like, you know, the, the flipper is like the GOAT status weapon for Moe's. Okay, very sick. Let's keep it going. Okay, so we are on to the day three comments. We have Relaxing Cody saying, I really like your commentary style. It just feels like a natural kind of deal. <laughs> oh, dude, big. I'm Red Sheik's blushing. Red Sheik's blushing. In BL4, I want raid bosses that aren't just a guy. You know what I mean? I like invincibles that are actually creatures instead of just a guy. Terra is just so cool. And then you get... And he's super boring. I can get behind this. I think raid bosses having size and scale and the arenas having size and scale matters right even though crom is just the big crab like and i'm having more experience with son of craw than i do craw i think watching terra come in like the gate close the gate opens and like this creature comes out that was previously in behind the gate but then you did something like oh no it's like i'm i'm in a bad spot here i shouldn't have done this um so I, I, I really like what you're saying here. And humanoids in general, I feel like are less satisfying than creatures. Um, when it comes to enemies. So I think that there's like an innate, at least from my personal op opinion, I think there's like an innate disadvantage to humanoid raid bosses. But there's also an innate disadvantage to writing creatures as villains. Um, and it's not just because it's harder. It's also because, you know, you don't want your players, you know, going around killing puppies skags all the time you know it's cool i don't want to kill skags all the time but yes i agree I, I think big creatures is is the meta when it comes to raids I can, that that i i, I can 100 percent get behind you there jv wonder the brother to the mikey dub says stricter element deduction for wrong chosen can also cause a ripple effect okay so before i go any further this is a comment based on something i said in my last video where I talked about the way I would rework elements if I were to rework elements for BL4 is to harshen the penalties for using the wrong elements, make kinetic the non-elemental element, <laughs> make that have damage, balanced damage across the board. Make it have balanced damage across the board because right now it's weak to armor. Remove that. And I think you have a really, really good, fun, balanced um, element system. And a big part of it, a big part of it, was that I want to remove all elemental immune enemies. I don't mind if certain bosses are elemental immune. I don't... It's tough because I, then you're like saying, well, then you don't get Nomad Pyrotex. It's like, yeah, you can still have Nomad Pyrotex. They, they can just be, you know, not weak to fire. Which, in my words, I know that's not Borderlands. So it's never going to see it in Borderlands. So I said reduce... Like maybe, you know, make it less of those specific enemies because those enemies are really hard to kill in general for single element builds. And that's my whole point is that I, I want single element builds to shine. Like, yes, if you can get, if you can go only corrosive and make it work, even through all, even the harsher penalties that we've now inflicted on the player. And I think that's, that build deserves to just rip the game, you know? I think, it deserves, I think it deserves to mindlessly rip the game. Um, that being said, a, a part of having a build is to swap weapons at the right time. Or something like that. You know what I'm saying? There's always a counter argument. But I think that's a pretty good way to rework elements. So, JB Wonder's comment that says, Stricter element deduction for wrong chosen can cause a ripple effect to go back to non-elemental weapons. Yes. That is an, that is a, that's a, a planned feature of the, of the rework that I was mentioning, a planned feature. These weapons need to be considered again as viable tier. I agree. I mean, I don't think that they're that far out of the meta because I mean, like look, look at flak meta, get yourself a monarch, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I know some characters, it matters a lot more than others to have elements going. 
not there are non-elemental options but it is true at a base elemental weapons are better than non-elemental weapons because there are so many sources of elemental damage um increases in this game that you can just make more of it it's it's not it's not always better on every build or whatever it's, i'm gonna need to take a look at this monarch it's a 12 8, 7, 9 times 4. The fire rate is quick. It would probably be pretty good. It's got a... Pr that's a pretty nice anointment, too. Hmm. I wonder... If I get the one with the, me the melee damage barrel... Which this one doesn't have, actually. Wait, yes, it does. Is it just melee damage? No, it's also accuracy bloom. Okay. So if it doesn't have the blade, then I don't want it at all, basically. It's fine. We can go again. The yeah, IJV Wonder. That is... That was something that I planned for, and I th and I agree with you. I think that a move back would be pretty sick. And I'm, when I say back, I mean like, I don't know if elements were always the best, but I like kinetic weapons just being considered. I don't know. At a baseline, I think that non-elemental weapons are cooler. I don't know. I just want them to be better. I want them to have a, a purpose. And right now, their purpose is just being worse than elements. I want them to have their own niche use case. And for this, I want their niche use case to be non-elemental. Should be the most versatile of all the elements. Because each game, there's a... They, I think it's a complaint that players have. And I don't think this is just me. But... Each game has one element based on the enemy variety that just becomes the best, the best overall. In Wonderlands, it was Cryo. In BL3, it was Radiation. I think in BL2, it was Shock, right? I, I do not want an element to hold that throne. I want the best, most versatile weapon to be non-elemental. And you say, that how can you do that? By implementing the changes that I suggest. <laughs> But that is just me, a person who has no game design experience, coming up with a system that I think works in my head. Okay. Spaz Maniac says, for BO4, I want them to spend more time on the story again. Definitely felt like that took away from 3's replayability. I made that a word. I think replayability is a word. I think you're good, bro. As far as gameplay, I love the pacing of 3 better than 2, and it was way more simple to understand and build my skills. I agree on the legendary comment, toning down the amount. I think they do this by making the meme weapons blue and purple rarity again and promote better legendaries so we can make our builds around them. I always disliked in 2 how I had to look up everything for my builds because the gear required was blues I never knew existed. Like how melee builds needed a love thumper or the use of the rough rider. I still don't get, get it after watching countless runs of jolt. <laughs> if you read all this, all of that, thank you. Love the content, especially Roguelands. I don't get how Jolts puts all that work into it, yet hasn't posted a single run. Oh, wow. Holy moly, bro. Okay. So I agree with a lot of what you're saying here. Um, mostly because you're agreeing with what I'm saying. But as far as your point about the... Your first point about the replayability. Do you, you want them to spend more time on the story? I don't know if, if time... I don't know if time was the problem. I think it was uh, decision making from from bl3 right i don't know if time fixes that i think time helps it i don't think spending more time on a on a decision to try to make it a better product is ever really a bad thing unless you're prone to overthinking or something like that when it comes to when it comes to the strength of the story of bl3 i think that there was just certain decisions that were made that led to the overall story not feeling that great and i think that there's a lot Everything in a game affects every other thing around it. So I, I've said in the past that I think the game feeling a little bit easy made the the combat parts of the game shorter. And then by comparison, made the story elements of the game feel longer. And they are long. But I don't think that the game feeling easy to a Borderlands player, right? I'm a Borderlands player. The game felt very, very, very easy to me. And then when I sat around Sanctuary, and I still loved it. I was like, wow, this gameplay feels amazing. Like I'm running around, like I can still feel my damage increases. I can see what my skills are doing. Like this feels great. I can't wait to level up and get more stuff. 
Um, it does feel easy, but I was like, you know what? I get that. I'm a Borderlands player. Feels easy. But then when I sat around Sanctuary for a long time, I was like, oh, I get it. Like, like this is going to be a, a process. This is going to be a journey. Let's see if we can get a Peregrine to land right on him at the right time. If not, when in doubt. Oh, we do get the, get the kill. Holy cow. Nice. Oh, that was some old tech. That, that tech remains in the dungeon. Okay, so this one has a chance. I don't think it has a chance. Let's see. Let's check out the stats on this bad boy. It's a shock monarch times four. Is 10k the highest? Oh my gosh, it's missing everything. Get this out of my hands. How do I drop it? Pull down X. Later, kid. Is what it is on that one. Yeah, so I, I agree with you that the story, I think taking more time in it, I think the story needs to be better. If that's what and you, you think taking more time is a solution, I don't know if taking more time is a solution. But one solution I that I posed, I'm not going to say that your solution is terrible and not, try, not at least put one out there of my own. My solution is to make the game harder, which makes us take more time between story bits. I think that might that might also have a good effect. Uh, as far as gameplay, you say you like the, the pacing of Borderlands 3 over Borderlands 2, which is very interesting. You like the, the pacing of the slides and the jumps and all that, which is, you know, I can definitely, you know, I can definitely understand that. I do like the way BL3 combat feels. I mean, there's a reason I'm playing it now over BL2. I think it's a big part of it something that i haven't really thought of before but yeah the pacing of combat the pacing of gameplay it's a really important fact it's a really good point that you made okay and everything else was you know us just talking about the legendary system you did mention how you want purple and blue rarities to have the gimmicks that's something that i have thought of as well but i think there were uniques in bl i think it's purple uniques or moxies and i i, I used to think that pump more blues and purples in was the was the way I think that the new way that I've come to grips with is, and I agree, like, like you said, get more blues and um, purples to have unique gimmicks. If they want to keep all the legendaries having the gimmicks, I think you could still save the system by giving us um, pearls, meaningful pearls, defined roles. And I said in my previous video, they should be the biggest and the baddest that each manufacturer has to offer. Right, so... I agree with you wholeheartedly, Spazmania. I would love what you said. As far as the uh, the Jolt stuff, not only do I disagree about him, um, your beef with him not posting a Roguelands run, despite having worked so hard on it, um, not only do I disagree with your take, but have you watched any of his <laughs> recent content? The guy has it in, as the gameplay for everything that he's posting. So... Yeah, you go, take that take that last part back to the lab, brother. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, Simply Nico says, I want more than four Vault Hunters. Real raids with mechanics. True raid boss weapons. Uniques for each raid boss. A more Vault Hunter defined skill tree. Unique weapons, shields, and grenades for each Vault Hunter. Okay, so Simply is, is very much about um, the Vault Hunter. So his first his first sentence is mentioning Vault Hunters. Then he, then he hits raids. So he wants raids with raid boss weapons unique to that raid. So very strong, very, very valuable options for each raid. And everything else is about the Vault Hunter. So he wants rare loot to chase, and he wants the Vault Hunters to feel, if I, so correct me if I'm wrong here, he wants the Vault Hunters to feel special, unique, um, powerful in their own ways, with more, with tons of options as far as gear for their specifics, for your specific spec that you're running. No. I really think that I could get behind you with all that. And I think that that not being in, in the, like, when it comes to having those things in the game, I think that's, that's something that the developers want in the game and have always strived to have in the game. And they've, they've made it happen it's a multitude of different ways, giving you more options as how to make your character just stronger, like specifically your Vault Hunter as well, like with anointments. If that just... And they did skill power in Wonderlands, which has gone over kind of meh, but they are trying different ways. And I think that you can expect more of the same coming from BL4. Um, when you say a more Vault Hunter defined skill tree, that's a tough thing for me to, like, when, when you say it like that, it's a tough thing for me to put my head around. It's like, what do you mean a more Vault Hunter defined skill tree? Do you want the skill tree to more um, 
to, to more to be at more harmony with the overall theme of the character um i say this all the time but an example that i think of is mose the demolition woman skill tree and the bottomless mag skill tree have very very clear defined roles um that's mega fire rate and endless magazines and the, the demolition woman is things go boom and that matches her her theme of being this demolition woman she is a soldier this these are she wants things that go boom and it comes to fire really fast that that's a really great i know that's a that's a super easy synergy to create in a first person shooter which is why i tend to go for the soldier characters in the first place because yeah you can create really cool unique things in a soldier class because well it's a soldier class I like to I personally like the soldiers because of their each of their have their own unique spin on the game, which is really, really cool. Um But I agree with you. You're saying that you want to have unique weapons, shields, and grenades for each vault hunter. That could be that's something that we haven't seen. I don't think I don't think there's ever been a vault hunter specific weapon, shield, or grenade. That might go against the ethos of the game. Um, I agree that it'd be cool, it'd be cool, but it might go against what I think the ethos of the game is, and that's like, um, exploration and discovery. I think it's a major, major theme of what they want, and I think they kind of want you to, to find that sort of stuff on your own, you know? Alright, uh, check this bad boy out. Alright, so all three barrels, all three, all three bodies, all three barrels, good stuff. Grip is damage, so it's a times four. Four grip is damage. But it doesn't have the reload speed sights. Holy, it's so close. I mean, it doesn't have the reload speed sights, but everything else, everything else is God mode status about this. Besides the anointment. So, let's go ahead and favorite that. My backpack is full now. If I have any other shock monarchs times four, they can go. I still have so many, yeah, of all these. I just gotta make sure I don't sell the wrong one. The damage we're looking for is 12879. I've got one, two, three of them. No, this one can go. Oh, this one's a times eight. Okay, that one stays. Got these two. And one of them is the best for now, because it has consecutive hits, and one of them is the best later because it has a faster fire rate. Okay. That's the work we have to do, okay? I, I'm not going back to Sanctuary. I, I'm at this boss. I gotta drop something. Sheed K Man says, Hey man, I've been watching your vids on 1.5 speedball farming the Sarah of Supre oh Sarah of Supremacy and got way more monarchs than you did, so I think you should switch over. Dang. That's a that's a tough one. Ah, that hurts my that hurts my soul, you know? I kinda that really does hurt. It's like I've set this farm up for perfection, you know. I mean look at me. And it's killable, you know? Like, he's like, I don't care about the revolter. Like, I am the end game. I get it. You can one-shot him with a lot of stuff. But this is my method. You know, this is the the old god tech. It's got something a little bit different. It's the old god tech. I know it's like, wait, everyone uses the old god. Listen, <laughs> I found a shield that works well with it, okay? <laughs> let, let a guy be. And I don't know about the anointments, but this melee damage one seems pretty cool. So, let a guy have his fun, okay? I don't try to look up everything about builds and stuff like that i like to learn a little bit from like i am invested in the game i like to see like what's what people are using by the way let's go back to our cryo racks just to guarantee these one shots so not one shotting thing is starting to get a little on my nerves perfectly timed never mind oh come on spawn it there we go got him and you're gone see the get, watch him get real close see i don't have that it's not that great at close range Amiga that life. whoa interesting so it's not that it's not so great at close range scourge this is called the scourge too i think it might be a worse plague bearer is that what it is i'm not sure how good the scourge really is as far as your comment sheet came in I, it's just i got this build set up for this farm i've already got a counter going you know like I'm, I'm okay doing this farm i might switch over i have switched over to different farms in the past but this one i got it's just it's just doing the things you know it's doing what i need to do i might switch over if i want to go for more of like a combat focused run it needs more damage. We officially know that 10, 8, 1, 9 is the higher damage roll. So unfortunately, we're not taking that fire monarch. Sorry, sorry. Brandon Villanueva says, if the only thing wrong with the gun is the accuracy, which is based on my aim, it's a god roll. I just spam left trigger to get the auto aim. And what he's mentioning here is we got 
a potential god roll monarch in the previous video it is it is this one right here this ferocious monarch okay potential god roll it's our first times eight but it didn't roll with all three bodies it did not roll with the accuracy body and he is making the point here that um, if the only thing wrong with the gun is accuracy which is based on my aim so he's saying that accuracy is based on aim and he can bypass the aim factor by using the left trigger spam auto headshot auto aim mechanics that aim assist gives you especially on a console but you can also put it on pc so he's saying that if, if all it's missing is accuracy it's a god roll in his mind so it's missing fire rate into my head i was like okay well i don't mind if it's has less fire rate that might actually be better because then i can sustain the magazine using terror and marie gen but then i tried to sustain the magazine using terror and marie gen and it and it failed miserably so thank you for your comment brandon actually the thing is it's not the only thing wrong with it I, I do want the extra fire rate so unfortunately it's not my god roll which is why we still keep going odd texan says why not from kill a vault by offing yourself to after every kill keeps from the safe quit he's been the only, one of the bosses that respawns that respawn deaths okay yeah i get what you're saying like yeah why shouldn't i just do the respawn tech i should have grouped you in with the other but we i think we can determine from earlier in the video that it is in fact slower merv hex not mervtacular though we go again so for me it's much slower winglebert says no more lorelei she's horrendous i i know that there is controversy surrounding lorelei because because of the transgender um, identity or because of her she's, she's potentially a transgender character i believe she is so there is controversy surrounding the character but as far as lorelei goes i'm i'm a fan of lorelei i think it's a cool character i never played new tales so i don't i don't know about all the extra stuff but there is a controversy so i understand but i personally unless you feel that strongly about either lorelei for other reasons in which I would probably if you're trying to make a point besides the fact that she's horrendous like that's the only thing you have to say like give me at least from my perspective as someone who's reading the comment and wants to know more like i'm invested in your in your comment give me one more thing like why because i just have to assume now that the most probable outcome is that you don't like lorelei because of the controversy which is something that i don't really want to talk about in the first place right so Give me one more reason there. And then we can discuss Lorelai from a character perspective. She seemed pretty cool to me. When you show up to Promethea, she's like fighting for her life. She's like, fall down or get over here. You're with me. Let's go. It's like, okay, someone who knows, no, someone who knows how to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got you. You need someone to take down, to defend the streets? I'm your guy. All right, so let's take a look at this negating monarch here. It's a times four. We do have a god roll times four cryo already. What I will do is equip that and let's do a one for one comparison here. Oh, unfortunately, it does not stack up to the cryo god roll times four. Let's go, baby. Go next. Okay, Isaiah Jenkins says for BL4, I want a better sanctuary slash New Haven area, BL2 class mods, and better balancing, like buff the bad guns so you can farm for everything and not the meta weapons. How much did I? I really hope I hit um, the counter. I might have. Let me know if I've been hitting the counter too many times. Look, we're getting to that point where it doesn't really matter. I can also go back and check. I also want to spend my guardian token. Here we go. Let's spend my dark my guardian token. Let's do anything. Oh, elemental damage. Perfect. We have bar on. <laughs> Obviously. I'm not messing around. Like I'm trying to farm for this monarch. Later, kiddo. If I did like bar off from the start, I would care more. Like if it was actually from a scratch character, but now I don't care. Okay, so he says like buff the bad guns so you can farm for everything and not just and not just use the meta weapons. Yeah, you know what? As far as your entire comment, the first thing you said was you want a better sanctuary in New Haven area. Better better already puts it into comparison with other games, right? So you're making a, com a comparative statement. It's something that I I do for BL3. Um, and you actually, you, you did put it in the comment section of a Borderlands 4 wishlist video, so I completely get it. Um, so... When you say better, I think I think you're saying what you mean, right? You you want it to be better than, at the very least, Sanctuary 3, Spaceship. I don't know if you are saying you want it to be better than Borderlands 2's Sanctuary, and I never really played New Haven that much. So, if that's the case, then you got to give me something like one innovative idea uh, Give me one innovative idea that can make it better than, say, Sanctuary. 
Because right now, like, you can there's 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 probably tons of different ways you can make it better. Like you put you put enough creative people in a room, or if you just sit there and try to come up with a good idea, you can come up with a good idea. So if you want it to be better, give us give me give me an example of how you want it to be better. So for me, for instance, if I take all of the games I've played, right? Of of the Borderlands games I played, and I think about what I want to be better from the starting area. Um some I'm I'm gonna try to come up with something on the fly here. I'm thinking of a game like Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, where the main menu was the starting area, right? And it was called the Backyard Battlegrounds. Oh, nice. Let's go. It was called the Backyard Battlegrounds. And you could access your multiplayer. You could look at your, your stats, all that stuff from a playable area. And if you left the playable, like your immediate base and entered like a, a neutral zone, like if you're Plants vs. Zombies, right? So if you're playing as a plant, if you left your big tree and it walked into the, like the back into the neighborhood... Um, you could start a capture the flag against the zombies at any time you want to and the zombies have their own castle on the other side It was a super cool main menu. So I'm immediately thinking of ways to incorporate something like that For I'm and I'm pretty sure I'm missing Numbers I might not be Honestly, I'm gonna go down too. I'm pretty sure I've, I've given myself too. listen. We're, we, we try to keep it honest with ourselves but a I think a better area I want to incorporate something like that so maybe immediately I thought of like within sanctuary um like I captured the flag style mode or something like that where you fight waves right that's what it is in, in Planet vs Zombies Garden Warfare 2 is like you put up this flag in the center and when you when you put the flag in the center the other side is like hey like hey plants you know that we're locked into an eternal struggle because it's plants versus zombies. You're not allowed to raise the flag in the center and call it your own. Like, we share this eternal struggle. Send everyone at them. And it's like, oh no, they're coming to get us. And then you, you fight for it and there's a challenge, you know, if you complete it. So it's like, it's cool. And it's fun to do. It's like, if you're just waiting around and you're like, I want to go like play the game while also waiting for my friends. I, like, I don't want to get into a session yet. Or maybe that is my session, you know? Something to do while you're waiting for your friends. That's like a really, really, really big deal for me. Um, I know you could RPG it around, but maybe something inside Sanctuary where you don't want to go out places, you know, you don't want to level up per se. Right? Something to just go do in Sanctuary that's fun that would be really cool. Maybe I think a better training area where you had multiple different kinds of targets um would be kind of cool with like better enemy tracking so that like my racks will actually go hit them and if you add melee if you add mayhem scaling add mayhem scaling to the training area as well i think a more sophisticated training area that better functioned as an end game damage calculator would be very valuable with enemy types that i can swap out maybe i hit a lever and i go to an armor target right i mean enemy types that i can swap out I think that's something you could add to Sanctuary, but if I'm looking for something fun, right, to speak to your comment, like something that could make it better, I think something fun can make it better. And something fun could be dodgeball. Dodgeball, where at the start of a round, everybody gets a certain amount of um, longbow grenades, and you throw it at a teammate, or you, you throw it at NPCs, or something like that, right? And you, or you throw it at friends. And the person who lands the most, you know, wins. And have a certain amount of lives, something like that. You know, something to see that's just like, you're like, that's crazy. Like, imagine. Imagine. Or give, and better yet, your Borderlands. Come up with your own dodgeball that you throw at your friends. Like, well, that's, that's not something you can, you know, wait for your friends to do. Like, that's right. Something that's, something that's soloable. Something that's soloable. I gotta think about it. I mean, I like the backyard battleground, how it kind of like, it's when the backyard battleground starts off in Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, it starts off kind of slow. You're kind of just like walking around and then these plants, or if you're playing a zombie, these plants just start kind of slowly showing up one at a time. And as you kill them, 
or vanquish them, bigger and badder enemies start spawning. I think a mode like that, where it's like sanctuary is like a big bar or something like that. I don't know. Like it's your bar. Like it's, your, it's, it's your headquarters. And maybe you can step outside the bar or maybe step into a bar. Yeah, maybe it, maybe the bar is the place, right? Miss Maxie's bar. You go in there, all enemies, right? Or if you go in there and you punch somebody, it becomes all enemies, but the enemies don't give you experience or something, right? Have the enemies not give you experience, but instead give you other rewards. Like maybe some, maybe you can earn cash for winning. You know, it teaches, it teaches gambling. I don't think they really want to go back to the gam whole gambling thing, but you could, you could earn something, you know. It doesn't, you don't have to wager. I was going to say you could lose money if you lose, but I mean, that's, that would be more fun. It makes it more fun, but it also makes it more addictive. It makes it more controversial because it's gambling. You know what I'm saying? So, if you guys have ideas for for how you could make Sanctuary better, drop them in the comments. Because I think it's a, it's a good idea to focus heavily on the, the central quest, the central zone, you know. I think Sanctuary 3 in my opinion did kind of leave the ball a little bit flat it was difficult to navigate the terrain wasn't that appealing um and i didn't feel satisfied with it in general i don't know like i know that that last sentence i'm not happy with it's kind of vague but as far as you know starting as far as the main zone i agree that it's a very important part of the game that we're, that should be a large focus in the development cycle. I think of, of all areas in the development cycle, I think of all the map designs, that one should obviously be the most carefully constructed. And it's overall probably the most important of any of them. All right. Isaiah also wants BL2 class mods. So if that's what you're saying, you don't want, you don't want these class mods, BL3 class mods, I'm assuming. Which there's some differences in BL2, the legendaries are less uh, gimmicky, and what I mean by that is, in BL2, class mods made you better at one of the already existing play styles for a character. For instance, the the gunzerker, the berserker, or sorry, the gunzerker, the um, the berserker. Those just make you better at guns erking builds. The legendary sickle for Krieg, that just makes you better at melee builds. The torch, better at fire build. Like there there wasn't necessarily that many build or gameplay altering play styles from the legendary specific class mods, in my opinion. And I agree with your opinion, Isaiah. Or I'm not sure if I'm not sure if you're if you're making that assumption as well. I think one of the very first things you lose if you want to go to an all BL2 class mod system is alternate play styles. This play style of delivering a fish slap grenade via my rack attack is only available to me because of a of a class mod that dropped in the fourth DLC. You know what I'm saying? Like the you make a valid argument. You make a valid point that BL2 class mods are good. And if your point is that, you know, you like the legendaries to be kind of like the best to offer as far as this individual play style, but sometimes there are blue ones but that make certain skills strong enough to be better than legendaries. Then, yes, we can go for BL2 class mods. But I personally like BL3 class, legendary class mod selection. I mean, Moe's, Rocketeer, Minesweeper, Blastmaster, Green Monster, Bloodletter. Like, they, they just so much change how the, how the character can function. So many more diverse play styles than BL2, which, have, which leans heavily on the skill trees to do a lot of that lifting. In BL2, your skill trees do a lot of your, your diversity lifting. In BL3, you get diversity lifting from your skill trees, but you also get it 
from your class mods and you also get it from your anointments they like before when we were talking about different ways to buff your vault hunter bo3 gives you a lot of different ways to play it and how much more different is what i'm doing now than what i was doing when i was destroying tyreen for the king and queen's calls you know what i'm saying it's just so much different so i like bl2 class mods i'm a very big fan of like how they have very specific uses like assault rifle damage assault rifle magazine size ex grenade damage like they have very specific use cases i'm a fan of that i should get this one shot there we go I i'm oh dodge dodge city population you oh because he's spawned in i have to go ahead and one shot these lads later all right red fang but nothing too crazy on it i don't know the skills in the red fang that are the most important though i'm assuming it's the middle one it's a pretty cool skill it's it's, it's thorns basically okay you also want better balancing like buff the bad guns so you can farm for everything and not just the and not the meta weapons you know i think when you type when you type it out you already know where my i'm not trying to make a counterpoint but i'm also like on the side of there's always a meta it's always 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 going to be a meta and there's also a niche meta right like certain niches niche use weapons are going to be meta as well like there's certain utility weapons like the grog nozzle right the healing that heavy utility like the emp 45 like there's all kinds of different things to farm and i know that you're i know that you think like oh well all you do is farm for the meta and then you one shot the raid bosses with it i agree with you i think in a perfect system in a perfect system the the strongest weapons are not that much stronger than your strong weapons i think that you should have a, a wide variety of weapons that make you take a while just well, it's not a fire it's, it's not a good enough fire rate for what i'm trying to get unfortunately so in a perfect world i don't want there to just be one really strong gun and then and then like two standard deviations down so when we get numbers two three four and five but that's the worst case scenario because then you get to experience all the content with the op setup and it kind of ruins the overall experience i i think but then at this, at, on the other end of the spectrum you have well you can't make the bosses too hard because then you can't have variety of game variety of build right so how do we balance that how do we not make it too easy or too hard that is a really tough to do like how tanky do we make the enemies you know what is the right amount is very difficult that's why you use experience mayhem 11 is, is a decent spot it's, it's a decent spot this is not the best weapon at all i'm just gonna get it out of my hands unfortunately i i think i i don't have one of these yet but it, it just it's, it looks gross to me i'm getting rid of it So yeah, I agree that you don't, balancing is important. I think it's just, you can't have one singular weapon tank the experience for the player base. Because the player base is going to go to the stronger weapons, right? And that's something you cannot control as a developer. But what you can control is how strong you, you make other weapons. Let players have options that are within their that are within their theme have players have weapons that are within their desired play style that match their character and style better that are stronger than the liquid cooling from wonderlands that there shouldn't be a weapon that is best on all four vault hunters and if there if there is a weapon that is best than all four all four vault hunters then it's either got to be it's either that the vault hunters all have very similar scalings which i don't necessarily think should be the case 
yeah like as long as it's not a gun is not the best on everybody and i think it's fine overall that's just one person's opinion when you have instances like the liquid cooling just like i don't know to me i felt like at least i i was playing berserker so it definitely was the best but the liquid cooling kind of was just like op everybody like you don't need like the characters that are going to gravitate towards that weapon in the first place don't need to be that supercharged you know the plasma coil doesn't have to be that supercharged for most players to use it you know what i'm saying and you can say well if we nerf it then players stop using it or something like that it's like not if it was already nerfed you know it just it just takes a little bit of 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 gameplay it takes a little bit of time for a weapon to enter the metagame for a weapon to enter the the entire you know discussion for it to really take a really take effect for it for its status to really be well known and unfortunately that's just how metas kind of go like things slip through the cracks that's why they do buffs and nerfs but i think what players are fe fearful for for borderlands 4 is that certain certain um weapons will be way strong and that they're the players will be used as the quality assurance to like you know the players will be used as the balancing levers rather than the quality assurance team which is a very valid concern in my opinion hey stop hitting me here we go oh no leggy unfortunato unfortunato we go one more so i like i, I say i agree with a lot of what you're saying and thank you for the comment of course and that's it is the last comment for the video so we're gonna do one more kill here thank you everyone for your comments um if you want to have a comment read all you gotta do is comment on this video or another video that i post and i'll be reading through them i think this is a really good content style for me i think if it does well then i might continue to do it and i've i have shown to myself that i would much rather do something that i enjoy doing rather than just pumping a, a video that does, gets numbers do we get rewarded at the end here Mm, I don't think so. I think for it to be max damage value, it's got to be what? Boop, 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 boom. 10, 8, 1, 9. Why do I have both of these? I don't need this one anymore, right? Goodbye. Forever. Here we go. So it's got to be 10, 8, 1, 9. If it's going to be a standard Holy Trinity element. And we'll do one more. One more for the lads. I need uh, you guys to comment more so yeah drop a comment tell us tell me what tell me your thoughts on on the borderlands universe in general any of your hot takes anything like that review it we'll talk about it have a discussion and drop a like in the video if you if you made it to the end of this video and you are about if your autoplay is about to start drop that like and i'll see y'all in the next one oh please nope all right i'll see y'all in the next one bye